Ukrainian new effective kamikaze aircraft came as a surprise to the Russians at the front. In addition to FPV drones, the Ukrainian Defense Forces began to use kamikaze aircraft against the armed forces of the Russian Federation. Oles Malyarevich, the deputy commander of the Achilles Shock UAV Battalion of the 92nd Air Assault Brigade, speaks about it in an interview with Channel 24. He noted that powerful, long-range kamikaze aircraft are used for attacks on the territory of Russia. In return, the troops at the front use small kamikaze aircraft to clear the territory from enemy air targets within a radius of up to 20 kilometers. Such devices cost about the same as FPV drones or a little more expensive. At the same time, they sometimes turn out to be more accurate and reliable. A very interesting and effective weapon. You always understand what the goal is, what the situation is with the enemy's electronic warfare and decide to apply something, either a kamikaze aircraft or an FPV. This is just one of the additional funds that has appeared at our disposal, he explained. Oles Malyarevich noted that drones are produced in Ukraine and the troops have the opportunity to directly contact engineers to improve the technology. The invaders are trying to intercept data on these devices and strive to make them ineffective, so the devices need to be constantly improved. This is a war of technology. That is, there is no time to relax here, the military said. Recall that on April the 26th, the Russian Federation showed a photo of an unmanned kamikaze aircraft, with the help of which it is claimed the Ukrainian Defense Forces struck at Russian territory. According to the OSINT analyst, the device is a modified light aircraft Sky Ranger Ninja. NATO defined red line for entering war on Ukraine's side. NATO may directly take part in Russia's war against Ukraine if Russian occupiers break through the Ukrainian armed forces defense line in the northwest of the country or in the event of a military provocation by the Russians against the Baltic countries, Poland or an attack on Moldova. An article in the Italian newspaper La Repubblica states that at the moment the collective Western security bloc has no operational plans that would involve sending troops into Ukraine. However, an assessment is being made of the likelihood of NATO's direct participation in the war if Russia crosses the red lines. The Western world may enter the war in Ukraine with troops if a third party intervenes, for example, in the event of a breakthrough by the invaders in the northwest of the Ukrainian state. This would create a corridor between Ukraine and Belarus. The tactical option has recently been recognized as probable by several allied analysts. Then Minsk would be directly included in the war. Its troops and arsenal would be decisive for Moscow. And their circumstance could only intensify defense in favor of Ukraine, the article states. The second red line in the West is seen as military provocations against the Baltic countries or Poland or a direct attack on Moldova. This is not necessarily an invasion that could happen after the attack on Odessa, but simply a military strike to test the West's reaction, the journalists noted. It is assumed that Russia may try to test the alliance's ability to react in a phase of possible confusion. The chaotic situation refers to the election season in Europe and the United States. The Kremlin may think that NATO is distracted, but the bloc will not tolerate such manifestations of Russian aggression. It was published on the website of the President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky a petition containing a request to Western countries to send their troops to Ukraine. According to the petition each EU member state, as well as the UK and the US, must deploy their troops in Ukraine. The author of the initiative, Natalia Vysoshanskaya, urges the head of state to ask the United States, the United Kingdom, the European Union and other friendly countries to introduce Western troops into Ukraine. The Kremlin said that it perceived a petition launched on the Ukrainian presidency's website on deploying Western troops to the country to be an extremely defiant provocation. We consider this an extremely defiant provocation, no less. And, of course, we are closely watching this. The Kiev regime is quite unpredictable, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters in a press briefing in Moscow. Peskov reiterated Moscow's warnings regarding the direct intervention of NATO countries in Ukraine as potentially carrying enormous dangers. Earlier, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova told reporters that French troops would be targeted by the Russian army if they were deployed on Ukrainian soil after French President Emmanuel Macron said such a deployment could not be ruled out if Russian troops broke through Ukrainian front lines.